crooked. Hey. Hey girl. What are you doing? Okay, good talk. Hello. Okay, so um, the plan for this week, I am sort of swamped with the final project that I'm going to be doing for Halloween. It's, um, it's a lot of work. I didn't really plan too well. I need to work on it this week as well as next week. So it crossed my mind to not even do a video for this week because of how much work I have to do, but I figured maybe I could do this smaller portion of the bigger project, that you probably already know what it is because of the title of the video. Probably gonna be a little bit shorter of a video than what you're used to. I'm, do I'm doing my best. Okay. What? Yeah? What? This week I'm going to be making the pumpkin door from Nightmare Before Christmas. That whole circle of holiday doors was the most intriguing thing to me in that movie when I was a child. I don't know what it was. I just, part of me was so nosy to know what all the other doors looked like inside. You know? What other doors were there? All right, looks like we've got Halloween, St. Patty's Day, in which you can see an aerial shot of drunk people vomiting on the sidewalk in Boston. Easter, Christmas, Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, uh, and 4th of July. Again, drunk Americans. So I suppose I'm not as interested as I once was knowing <laughs> what these holidays actually are. It still remains that I've always wanted to make a Halloween door for um, hopefully any kind of tree <laughs> that you want to hang it on. And I feel like it's not something you see, which is surprising considering all of the Nightmare Before Christmas merch that exists in the world. You would think they would make tree decorations, right? Eh. Disney. I want to make this a little bit more of a tutorial than I normally do because I feel like I have a general grasp of what I need to do and what you could do with your own materials. Usually I have no idea. <laughs> Ooh, what the hell I'm doing? Let's get started and talk about what we need for this project. Oh my god. <laughs> Hello, yes, return of the antique chalkboard that I bought off of Facebook Marketplace. And now I use any excuse to use it. Except I am a giant. Time to squat. <sighs> what you're going to need for this project. First up, what I'm going to use is EVA foam, which is a really lightweight foam, very popular in costuming and cosplay, but you can also find it floor mats or workout mats. I get specifically cosplay foam, which Michaels sells, Joann's sells, very readily available. If not, you can get it online. So I am going to use Thick Boy. I believe this is 10 millimeter foam, so it is a little bit thicker. For instance, I think I also have eight millimeter, so. What, what am I doing? So you can kind of tell the thickness difference. Squat down again. Get my leg workout in. So I'm using this because I want to be able to have enough thickness to really carve in that wood detail. Thick. EVA foam. Check. Next, I'm gonna use wood burning tools. This is going to be quite large, so I feel like the larger the tip of the wood burning, probably the better. Now, obviously we're gonna be very, very, very careful with this because foam is not the most flame resistant material. You just need some paint. It's starting to make me wonder why I haven't made this before, but here we are doing it now together. So let's get started. This is a mess. Once again, who put me in charge of me? Cause I just, I just want to talk. Pretty convinced that I'm going to be finding sewing needles and sewing pins everywhere I go for the rest of my life and probably beyond. They're going to be finding stray sewing pins in my casket. Hi. Are you assisting me? So first things first, we have to figure out how big we want this to be. The good thing about using foam that comes in a coil, it kind of already has the shape that wants to wrap around a tree. I guess you just kind of make up the size yourself. Depends on the tree that you want to put it on. I am, oh, ow, big boy Sharpie. Can you, can you scoot a little? Boop, boop, thank you very much. Nope, not a little bit more. Thank you. Let's see, and if you mess up, it doesn't matter because all this is going to be covered anyways, which is my favorite kind of project. Ugh. 
kind of looks like an apple. Go make this a little more round. Did I just do this on the wrong side? Hmm. Yes, I did. <laughs> oh. Whew. You've heard of leg day and arm day, but what about wrist day? Okay. Ow. Oh, I'm dumb, dummy, dum dum. Hmm. So aside from messing up already, starting off this tutorial very strong. Now I'm just gonna go in and make the details that I'm gonna wanna make. And the nice thing about this is that it doesn't have to be exact. Here we go. So now that that is all traced out, it is time to wood burn. Like a beauty YouTuber. So I have this tip on. I figured this would be thick enough for me to really make some of those ridges and lines because not only do we have the facial features that I need to carve out, but also there is a wood grain embedded in it as well. So not only do you need the pumpkin ridges, but you also need the tree ridges. Lots of detail. It has been approximately 68 years since I've used one of these. I'm excited. We'll see how it goes. Wish me luck and that I don't burn my house down. So I've gotten most of this carved out, but to save myself some time, because the eyes took forever, and also it doesn't look great. I think I'm just gonna carve the mouth out with a rotary tool instead. I think that will save me some time and it might look a little bit cleaner. So let's give that a shot. Now that the base is all carved out, it is time for our friend Mod Podge, or as I like to say, Mod Podge. Normally with my foam stuff, I do Plasti Dip, which is a rubberized coating, but because there's so many nooks and crannies in this and some of it is kind of rough, it's never like super smooth. To counteract that, I'm going to make sure I get the Mod Podge really deep in those crevices. Ultimately, it doesn't matter too much because it's supposed to be wood. It's not going to be perfect anyways, but if we can try to minimize those lumps and bumps, that would be optimal. I'm not really a fancy way of doing this. I'm just going to kind of slap this Mod Podge onto it and work it into all the little nooks and crannies. Let's go. Good afternoon. Tis the day I am dressed like an actual sack of potatoes. Wanna see something really saucy? Wow. It's like one giant long butt. Who's that girl? And that can only mean one thing. Painting day! Which is my favorite. So after a couple coats of Mod Podge, here she is. She's very, very rough and lumpy. The good thing about doing Tim Burton-esque projects is that they can look rough and lumpy. It looks like it's on purpose. There are also so many little hairs trapped in here. Can you see them? Partly because 80% of the air in this house is made up of dog and cat, but also because I used a cheap paintbrush with Mod Podge and apparently that is a recipe for getting tiny strange little follicles of hair everywhere. <laughs> Sealed in there like Han Solo in carbonite. 
My plan for this is just to paint it with acrylics. The important part is going to be sealing it because if this is going to be an outdoor decoration, we need to seal the heck out of this. My painting dance. <sighs> Am I really out of breath from just doing that little jig? Oh my God. Let's get to painting. Now, like I said, the good part about this is that the more of a hot mess you make it look, the creepier. I feel like that's what the universe said when it made me. So this is a pretty basic paint job. I think what I'm gonna do is take this appropriately named paint, pumpkin, just do a base coat. I might airbrush the edges a little bit. I can't tell if that's the lighting or how it actually is, but I think it might look cool to have like an outer gradient. Go in with browns. I will probably go in <laughs> each of these tiny individual little cracks with a little bit of a darker color just to make it pop. Let's get to work. Why does this actually look kind of yummy? Hi. Have you come here to remind me not to eat paint? Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh yeah, it's nice and thick. You know, as grateful as I am that we were able to find a new house and that we're selling this one to a lovely couple, it's a bit of a bummer that this year I didn't really get to decorate for Halloween because <laughs> my goal is to basically be that eccentric old woman that lives in your neighborhood that dresses her house to the nines during Halloween season. And there are rumors amongst the village that I'm the crotchety old witch. <laughs> Listen, we all have goals in life. My airbrush didn't work great for this, so I ended up just doing it myself with some dry brushing. Then it was time for very professional measuring of the tree that I wanted to model this on. Aww. Then it was time for hot glue. What I did was attach the Velcro on one side, reinforce that a lot with hot glue, attach the elastic directly to the other side, reinforce that, and then Velcro on the strap. And with that, we are ready for the reveal. Wrap up time. This is just gonna be a pretty small wrap up because it was a pretty small project. I feel like there's not... Ah. All right, that's fine. I'll wait. Eventually. Anyways, that is it. Yeah, I don't know. It's a pretty small DIY project and I hope that I wrapped up my process as succinctly as I could. Altogether, this probably would have taken me a day to let things dry. I did kind of let it sit a little longer than it probably needed to. I don't know why I haven't done this before. It was so easy. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I know this video was a little bit more simple and probably a considerably shorter amount of time than my usual videos. I have a huge project coming for the last week in October. I, I really needed the extra time, so some crappy fun. Crappy fun. Yeah, I don't know, that's it. I don't, I don't know what else I really have to talk about. Keep your eyes open for next week's video. I love you, whether you're new or old to this channel, if you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload most Fridays. Stim stomping around up there. I can hear everything. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. 
Why does my filming time always coincide with my cat eating her food? Oh yeah, it's because she eats literally eight times a day. We have it set up on the um, automatic feeder app, Hobbit Meals. So she gets breakfast, second breakfast, 11sies, luncheon, afternoon tea, dinner, and supper. She's a queen. I have to wait for her to stop munching before I can talk. So that in the background you don't hear. Why are you standing like that? <laughs> Why are you standing like that? Huh. That's why. What you're going to need, uh, uh, first of all, what I'm... Who wrote this?